Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, DM Interrupted. Welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial for just five bucks a month. That's where you get early access to both our audio and our video episodes, plus our bonus show, Geeks on Trial Sidebar. Yeah, that's where you gotta go if you want to learn about our hidden talents or... What Taco Bell items we like. It's true. <laughs> it's the place to be. Uh, but And sometimes those combine, by the way. I, most of the time. We do both at once. Yeah. Well, my hidden talents include a taco. But you'll have to go pay for the, the, <laughs> the Patreon to see what I do with a taco. It's. I will say one thing. Oh. It did make me vomit <laughs> afterwards. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. Hmm? Which is part of the talent, I think. That is the talent. Now... We're going to have a big case today. It's going to be a real exciting show. Before we get into it, mm-hmm. it's time for us to address. You know, last week on the show, we had a case that was about TikTok. Right. Little did we know that as that case was coming out, there would be a bigger case in the real world about TikTok specifically. Sure. Specifically. Oh, are you okay? No, I'm not okay because uh. it turns out. That TikTok might be banned in the United States of America. Well, how else am I going to know what time it is if I don't go to the TikTok app on my phone? <laughs> I know, Grandpa. You <laughs> love using that TikTok app to set your alarm, <laughs> whatever you need to do. Uh, but, of course, I'm talking about the social media app TikTok with a K and a K. It's one word. Mm. And there's not a third K, fortunately. Oh. Oof, close huh. one. And uh, this is not the first time... We've been talking about TikTok being banned. Wasn't it? No. Didn't Trump want to ban TikTok a couple years ago? Right. Or yeah, probably. He was going to do it in Montana or something. <laughs> well, I think TikTok is banned in one U.S. state. And I don't remember. It's either Utah, Montana, something like that, that it is banned somewhere in the United States. And, it's and, one of the states that doesn't matter. <laughs> and I definitely think this has something to do with the whole net neutrality thing that, that we – had going on or taken away or whatever because like oh could be we could just ban this thing from our site from our from our phone our world and all that yeah, well let's set the stage for folks because just last week the uh the congress house of representatives yeah. <laughs> the, gov- the government the government how does the government work oh it doesn't if you're following the news <laughs> am i right uh no it was the house as they call it passed a bill which would Hugh Laurie? see Please don't interrupt me again. I'm trying to explain this a real thing, a serious I'm, thing. I'm, I'm people, sorry. It's it, it's difficult. I know it's funny, but people listening can't understand it if you're constantly cutting in. That's going to be for our next for our case later. We're gonna we'll get back to that. Go, go on. So, the House overwhelmingly voted to pass this bill. It was three fifty two to sixty five, which is like unheard of for a bill to be. That's uh, unanimous. It's, don't look up unanimous. Just trust me. It was unanimous. And uh, the the deal with this bill is that if now it's going to go to the Senate and if the Senate now also passes it, Joe Biden has said if it gets to his desk, he'll sign off on it. He'll give it the OK. And uh, the, what it means is that the owner of TikTok, ByteDance, will be made to sell TikTok to an American company. And if they do not, if they refuse to or if they are unable to, then TikTok will be banned in the United States of America. And the reason behind this, according to the politicians, is that uh, TikTok is run or owned by a Chinese company. So they do not trust them and believe that China's stealing our datas. Which, you know, (laughs) no U.S. company has ever stolen our data, including the U.S. government, who is, you know stealing everyone's data. But, you know, isn't that part of the whole thing of like, you know, all the Republicans keep being like, oh, my freedoms. Oh, you're stopping me from doing other things. You're kind of just stopping another company from just doing whatever. Like if we (laughs) wanted to use this app, we should be able to use this app. It is a strange and very stupid thing for so many reasons. (laughs) We're just doing it because we're afraid of China. But, okay, I'd be more afraid of like pissing off somebody like 
okay, fine, you're going <laughs> to ban this. We're going to come over and do something else. That's so if tic- the government of China even has anything to do with this f- fucking dancing app. You know, like, hey, come on with the language. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I saw a stat someone put out that the United States makes up about 10% of TikTok's user base. Right. So f- from their perspective, the option of selling it to a completely different company because of 10% of right. the is is absolutely absurd. At that point, 10% <laughs> of the US is 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 an, it's it's just going to be like a dollar out of their pocket. They'll be like, "Okay, fine, you don't get TikTok." Bye. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope if this happens that we get we can pirate TikTok and it becomes like an illegal app. <laughs> well, I mean, you you definitely will be able to if you use a VPN. Right. Uh, it's going to be the new prohibition era. <laughs> gonna, like, it's going to be speakeasies for TikToks. I just don't understand how they can do this because, like, I guess just stop it from hitting the the, the app stores. But then, isn't that up to Apple and Google to? I, say they can or can't like at what point is the u.s government stepping on somebody's feet and it's just like what we're technically not all about yeah obviously i didn't do any research but i'm sure yeah. that the government is able to say that yeah you couldn't you can't hold it on any app stores which which would probably cut down most of the user base because most people using phones aren't gonna understand yeah. how or care how to pirate an app or illegally and especially if you're on an iphone because then it's like pfft, <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing over there. Gotcha, iPhone users. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my it, thing, so there's a whole yeah. thing of like why th- like this app because like they're getting right. some potential data. How about some of the apps that are like you know actually harming children and people and are being used for like sex trafficking and like like apps oh, that are like you know <laughs> problematic and not just somebody. Also, what data? Like I'm just thinking about this right now, just going through my head live. What data are you giving? TikTok. Well, you're giving them the same data m- most of these things get, which is information about your interests and your personality, which which is can be sold to advertisers. Um, and there could be there's more stuff than, than that, that there's ways you can use it potentially in sinister ways. But like you said, this isn't about whether or not China has that data. It's that America wants only them to have that data. They're not right. trying to protect us. No, they're, they're trying, trying to, to eliminate their... a competitor. <laughs> but <laughs> if you like, think about the, it, we're the ones who pay attention and keep an eye on them, not you. <laughs> so like, OK, they can't do it. But OK, go to Google, go to, to Instagram, any of the other competitors and just get it <laughs> right. like. Get, uh, my ring, bit. my ring hit the mic. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Please, but yeah, it's not it, time it, to it's, deliver a verdict yet. Like I don't understand. It just seems like they're doing it because it's a Chinese company. If this was owned by like a German company, a Canadian company, it'd be like, nah, whatever, do whatever you want. Oh yeah, because Definitely, they don't literally. The reason. They don't care about any other app, and it's also because I, I, I'm yeah. sh- I'm sure they're not getting a kickback from this company because it's not a U.S. owned company, so they can't overtax it and you know, all that stuff, but it's, it's it's crazy. I have also seen some uh, speculation that I think is probably right. That part of it is because TikTok is also a little bit less regulated or at least less regulated in a way that the American government can control in that for, for example, there's a lot of TikToks out there uh, talking about Palestine and things that maybe the American government doesn't, doesn't maybe I'm getting into like conspiracy theory territory no, right now, but 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 it's it could be a part of it. It's out there. But a lot of this is like conspiracy theories that are like out there already by the government being like, oh, we're blocking this. But like, okay, then <laughs> right. What else are you blocking? Right. It's no longer a conspiracy if they're outright I, saying, well, we're banning it. And I do kind of find it funny that they're blocking something from China, which is a country that banned stuff from their from their citizens. <laughs> right. And the right. U.S. is often like, oh, you can't do that, mm, but we're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, the the hypocrisy is on display there, uh, and of course, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all these apps are doing the exact same thing all the time. Literally, it's... every site, app, government websites are doing this. Now, the other fun thing was maybe about a month ago, within the last month, um, President Joe Biden. Uh, some might call him Sleepy Joe. That I don't. <laughs> I don't call him Sleepy Joe. He seems awake whenever he's on his his meetings. But uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. he. And the government started his own TikTok. Oh, right. True. <laughs> so Joe Biden, 
And every other politician that is in office who's above probably or who's younger than 65, so not many of them, have TikTok accounts because I'm sure they use them. Yeah. I mean, it is a crazy thing to imagine if this happened. So here's the thing. I, I have heard different conflicting reports on how likely this is to happen. Right. It, it won't be probably for another, like, uh, until much later in the year if it actually takes effect. Even if the Senate were to pass it, that's going to take longer. Right. And, and then they have time to potentially sell the company if they were actually going to do that. So this isn't going to take effect right away, but there's so many careers now, social media influencers who rely yes. on TikTok. That's their income. Or if if not if it's not TikTok directly, they use TikTok for advertising. Right, and also so many out. like big corporations that work with the government. Like I get advertisements on TikTok mm -hmm. for like New Jersey health insurance. And, like, blood donations. Like, it's not just, like, oh, there's this place for people to make stupid videos. Like, this is how news gets to a certain generation, which is another conspiracy theory. It's like, oh, we're stopping news getting from other people to other yeah. people. So, you're, you know. But well, I you do know whose checks clear better than New Jersey health insurance is is Google. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's who they answer to uh, above everyone else. If Google or whoever tech company doesn't like TikTok. Now, we are in the midst of a election year, a big election right now, Trump versus Joe Biden. And do you think this is one of those things like the emails that we're, we're putting on to cover something else that is going on? Like this is the, oh, get, get, <laughs> get all the youngsters, uh, you know, upset about losing their TikTok and maybe they won't vote. You know, that yeah. kind of like BS that our government does and does quite well. Yeah, I don't, it's hard to say. I don't know. It, it, it could be something. It is strange that this is such a, has so much support right. from the government, you know, that it's like of all the issues that go through there, this is the one most people can agree on. Um, I don't know that they're doing themselves any favors with it because you are pissing off a lot of the younger voters right. and it feels like. I don't look, I'm I'm just some rube. I've never won no election, but it seems to me that in an election year you wouldn't want to do something that's so publicly right. um makes you hated <laughs> like and makes you seem old. Like our, makes you our seem out of touch. Our political parties both sides are way too old to be working any job in the US in general. Like they should be retired and doing whatever. <laughs> But they shouldn't be deciding, you know, what technology is going on. It, like, if you can't set up a Skype account, I'm sorry, you can't, you can't do, <laughs> choose my stuff like this. Yeah, right. I I, I agree fully. It's a it's a ridiculous, ridiculous thing. And people, TikTok tried to rally their own users to get them, and some TikTok creators, like I think, went to went to the hearings and were, were calling up representatives and trying to tell them, don't do this. Uh, didn't work apparently because it, it passed with flying colors. But this is something like a short on my radar because we use TikTok for this show. I I'm often on TikTok, but it's just so insane to me that like this is blowing up, but yet we still have abortion bills in Alabama that are getting hidden by this and, and, you know, human rights campaigns that are going on, but everyone's getting up in arms about TikTok and and this is the thing they're using to as the curtain to hide the stuff that's going on in Alabama, Texas, like you know other country, other well basically other countries, but other states. Flint, Michigan, they still don't have clean water. No. <laughs> no, this is uh if nothing else this is uh another piece of undeniable proof that our government does not care about us. <laughs> When this is like, right. this is the thing, it, like, you know, when they say, oh, we don't have the power to, it takes so much time to fix this, to fix that. And then they're like, oh, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all want to ban TikTok. That's right. the important shit. It's like, wait All a these old white people can rally behind shutting down TikTok in a month. But, <laughs> you know. Why couldn't you? What about the, there's people who are dying. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But China. But, but China, but you, you don't know, know gay, what they're doing. Gay marriage took what twelve years to pass, but they could shut down TikTok in a day. Yeah, well, they could, to be fair, they could shut down gay marriage in a gay, in a day too. <laughs> they could. Anyone get passed like that? Yeah, 
Roe v. Wade. If they, if they, if they really want to stop something, you know, they have the power to do that too. It's just, it's so much harder to actually do something good. <laughs> now, do you actually think that this, the company will actually sell to an American company? I don't, I don't think they will in a million no, years. They have it, no incentive to. And it's 10%. Like it's 10% of their user base is the United States. They could be like, okay, have a good day. Or they'll just make a second company and just link everything to TikTok. I mean, I'm pretty sure that this the TikTok is worth billions at this yeah. point. They'll call it, they'll call them Freedom Talk. There you go. You sure? <laughs> well, I'm sure Trump will start his own Freedom Talk. Has. That's the interesting thing because is that both Biden and Trump are seem to be, or at least at one point, have been pro banning TikTok. Right. You know, Trump could whatever, however he wakes up is how he decides what to say. But I'm like, will they will they be united on this, or will Trump right. use this to go after Biden? Well, that also makes know. it so much worse for people to be like, oh, one side's worse than the other. They're both the same freaking person. It's the same thing. Come on now. We, this is not a political show. We, oh, we don't need to get into the. <laughs> now, my other thing is I'm surprised we're not seeing other tech companies jumping on this because most of these tech companies that are based in the U.S. use other countries for other things. And at any moment, the U.S. can come in and shut down, you know, YouTube, anything, you know, other media platforms just because they don't like the way it's run. So you would think all of the, the dot coms and all the TikToks and, and uh, all the tech companies, social medias and all that would get behind not doing this because it's going to come after them next. In yeah, theory. They, they should be, but they, they, they believe the government is not working in their interest and they have enough money to keep it that way. Well, because the government's the paying ones. them. Or their, or vice versa. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> depending on the scenario. That, and I'm assuming. Yeah. I wonder if YouTube and like Instagram, the the two other things that are using vertical videos, horizontal videos. Vertical. Whatever. You're right. Vertical. Vertical videos <laughs> are like, oh, this is good because we'll get all these people to come over to oh, our platforms. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. They're absolutely, and they would be thrilled. They have, but. I agree with you that it's short sighted because it's this would essentially set a precedent that, as you said, the government could just decide we don't like that website. Right. Take like it's, which is it's, it's, it's outlandish. It's, but it's, it's also like we, know, we've, we've been on the deep dark places of the web. Like I'm surprised they haven't gone through and just taken stuff down if they have the ability to, but it doesn't yeah. bother them. You know, it yeah. doesn't, you know, all the, you know, weird, creepy things out there, but TikTok, that's, that's the issue. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with us. I think uh, we were kind of maybe the final straw. Uh, they didn't like our – they just don't like us. They're like, this but, show kind of sucks. We should take down the app. <laughs> but if you guys want to follow us on TikTok, we have our own TikTok account. Oh, yeah. We're on there. Follow right. us while you still can. Get yeah, right. on trial. Uh, so it's it's a crazy thing. We, we will we will find out in the months to come where it goes, but – it's it is wild that it's gotten this far, even if it goes no further. I I don't know what's gonna happen. Cause I I thought it was a joke. Like when they're like, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, they're, they're banning. T-. I'm like, oh no, they're in court now. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not all right. Uh, it's, it's not. Great. And here's the thing: is we are also in court, right? And as much as I'd love to spend all day talking about those other courts, we have more serious shit to get to. Sure. Today's case comes to us from the internet. You can find a link in our episode description. Our defendant today is Jim. Jim is a relatively new dungeon master in the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons. During a recent session, Jim's players encountered an evil drow cultist who they were attempting to retrieve at the request of the cultist's children. Bear with me, it's nerdy. The cultist starts monologuing in an evil, culty way when halfway through his speech, another player, Dave, has his character blast the cultist with a fireball. Jim, the DM, is annoyed by this because he was attempting to give important narrative direction through the speech. He asks, can I just finish my speech, please, before you start fireballing? But Dave doesn't like being told what to do. Uh, He decides, I'm going to leave. I'm getting out of here. He bounces before the session is over. Uh, Dave says that his character has personal reasons for being disgusted with this cult leader. And so interrupting him with a fireball was well within his rights as a player. Now, as dual judges here on Geeks on Trial, it's our job to determine whether the cultist deserves to be heard or if that fireball should be the final word. Probably could have fit in like nerd in there too. That would have been. 
So, you know, I, I don't always want to overload it. Like, sometimes it can be a simple one. Otherwise, it gets fatiguing okay. when there's just so many rhymes. And, it, it, you know, it's just a simple one. And it's, you know, it's a heavy case. There's it's a lot of information to be unpacked. <laughs> there's a lot of information. A lot of information. I got to get the, the, the books out and we got to figure this out. Yeah, there's more. Uh, we could go slightly more in depth with the specifics of, of this one, but... Uh, I think this is a fascinating case because it's it touches on the, in this case the player infringing on the DM. Right. When in most Dungeons and Dragons or role playing game cases that I'm familiar with that we hear for, hear about and I mean, these come across our desk every day. We share it's usually one the other way around. It's usually the complaint is about the DM is railroading, the DM is being too harsh or too mean or going too easy or whatever it is, uh, killed my character. Right. And, and here it's the killed players interrupting, killed my wife in real life, <laughs> so we could make so we could schedule easier. It was the right. only way to do it. Yeah, it's the only way Fair. to do it. That one's not Sometimes, guilty. Hey, listen, I get it. I get it. I get it. Killed. I get I, it. We've all killed a wife before. Right. At least once. OJ Simpson's out there watching like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, really coming he, in with the topical references. He might still be in jail. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. He wrote that book. It was pretty good. Well, he used to watch us on TikTok. But... So there, this is a two-way street between the DM and the player of, of, of giving each other enough room to, to right. navigate a game and make sure you're not overshadowing either one. But usually it's... Typically in my head, and I'm saying this as uh, having been a DM, yep, you're professional mostly in D and D. Yep. Uh, email me. I, I I will I will run your game for you for mm -hmm. four thousand dollars a word. Oh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Hmm. Don't read the fine print. I can't uh, afford to. Typically, it falls to the DM. The DM is the one who is running the game. Right. They're usually the one who is meant to be keeping these things in check, which it sounds like he's trying to do in this in this instance. But I don't know. I don't know if that's if he's doing what he should do. You're you're often a player. What? Thank what, you. I, just just speaking broadly, mm -hmm. what's your kind of feeling on being a player and? How being in character, whether you're interrupting, say, the DM or the character they're representing, where do you draw the line between fictional and reality? <laughs> so usually what I, I mean, I always take D&D &D very, very seriously. And and the DM is the master of the game. He is very masterful and and not you. You're yeah, you're you charged master of the game playing lots of cards. He can roll some dice and then he has a fireball. Okay, so I am going to cut off the DM right now because <laughs> I can't do that. So, you know, usually the DM is the person in charge. He, he or she or they are, are in charge of the game. So, you know, depending on the person, I will respect that. Um, and I, I will not try to butt in, especially as character, because I, I often feel like the DM isn't a character in the game. Like a sure. DM is like the, the the voiceover, the producer, the god coming yelling down at you and telling you where to go. So I I never really think that like the DM is somebody you can interact with. Well, the DM controls characters you can interact with. Right. Does that <laughs> does that sound correct to you? No, it does sound correct to me, but it's like <laughs> the non playable characters or anything like that, or DM. Is yeah, there yeah, a specific yeah, yeah, name yeah. for that where it's just a DM controlled character? Or that would just be a non playable character. That would be an NPC, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, because it's a non player character. So the, the DM is not considered character. a player, yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's non playable depending on the context, but yes, it, I think you could safely call them NPCs. That's right. So, you know, I. I, I I guess it depends on your, like, if his character is kind of like this kind of badass, this kind of like, kind, like, it's it's written into their characters that they are this kind of person, I guess it would make sense. But you do that with other characters at the table and maybe not the DM. But if this is a character that the DM was controlling that you're cutting off, that's still a character in the world and not just the DM announcing things. Right. It's a, it's a tricky thing. And like you said, it's, 
it's where where do you draw the line? And this, I feel like this usually comes up most often in with players talking to each other. Right. Usually it's uh, real people saying my character wants to do this. And the other person's like, well, my character wants to do this. And they're arguing. And sometimes there's a line between arguing in character because your characters would argue. Right. And then just arguing because you're just arguing. Because <laughs> <at that point. laughs> to some extent, it's, it's all dependent on group dynamics, but it can be kind of fun. You know, you think of your classic classic uh classic team up team fiction think of your guardians of the galaxy <laughs> give me think a of your think of your okay ghostbusters oh, hold, hold on <laughs> think of your okay. dungeons and dragons honor among thieves starring chris pine and, and the rest i never uh, never saw that but i drank the soda there was a soda? AMC had a themed soda. It was orange soda. It was dragon uh, orange blood something soda. I feel stupid. like you should have to see the movie if you're going to drink that. I think that's. I think they should have kicked you out. Well, I mean, I came in the back door of the theater, so I just I stole a cup out of the garbage and just went over, so it was fine. That might not have been soda. <laughs> oh. Anyway, you think of any of these classic tales, and uh, usually a lot of the fun is the characters kind of bickering with each other. Right, so, and, and fighting like, and having internal stuff. Yeah, so you you sometimes it, if your group is okay with it, that can be fun to recreate a little bit, right. and I think that can extend, perhaps even more so to the NPCs. I mean, I feel like definitely in our games, in fact, I'm sure I had some characters who the group found annoying. <laughs> oh, that, that you that you were controlling? Yeah, that I was controlling. That like uh, I don't know if you recall, there was a guy named Opie Dopin. I do. And, and <laughs> I forget how he talked, but he was definitely annoying. Right. <laughs> you could tell from his name. Or who was, was there a, yeah, there, there was a couple of characters that I'm sure nobody liked. Right. Oh, there was a little girl. Remember the little, <laughs> the little girl that you had to, you found? No. And she was just like a mean little girl. And she, she was like yelling at you guys. You like took her to her home at, at a farm. It's sure. all, some of this is on. Uh, it's captured in audio. Yeah. I do remember the um the, the the big one was the the barkeeper, who was made of right, stone. but everybody loved him. Right. Um, <laughs> but there was definitely some times of characters going, "This person needs to shut up," and right. like attacking them or something. Which is, so the question is, where is is there a line when it's when is it not okay to just say this character is annoying? I'm gonna hit him. If you think your character in the game actually thinks that this character is annoying there isn't one any character is up for grabs to to attack to do whatever with because they're in the world and if, if your character your 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 person is that kind of person or potentially thinks they are harmful or it would benefit the storyline their storyline or just be funny um, you know, I think any character is up for grabs. Um, maybe if it's not going to, like, if it's going to affect your gameplay, so it's like, oh, I'm going to, you know, kill my co-player because I think it would be funny. Maybe that would be like a, well, <laughs> right. but that's also up to the DM to be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, roll for this. And then they could either actually roll or just kind of fudge numbers and be like, no, you didn't do it. Yeah, there is definitely a there's 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 a limit, right. I think, to to how much you can do because in the moment I agree with you. Yeah, your character should be if if you're the kind of guy who's just doesn't have time for any bullshit and you're running around and saying, "Hey, shut up. Tell me what the quest is. Let's go. Right. Come on." But it also comes down to what does the rest of the group want? Yeah. What kind of game are you running? And is, is it pretty annoying if, if you're the DM and maybe how, like, how often does this happen? Does the DM write, does he spend an hour every week coming up with material and then it, he never gets to do it because Dave comes in and just fireballs them before they get to say anything? Well, at that point, I guess that would be up to, like, if it happens your first time or if this is like a, a serial thing that keeps happening, it's up mm. to the DM to know that's going to happen like you know a big thing is the yes and so it's like okay he's able he's going to do this and you have to be like oh sorry a boulder dropped on dave you know maybe that's this is a big i'm glad you said yes and because i think 
the basis of a lot of good D and D is is good improv, right? And as uh, we're both UCB improv mm-hmm. troop members I'm, from the, I'm from on the, the main past. stage right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we know a lot about this. Mm-hmm. I've worked with I've worked with Greg Proops a few times. Yes, and as you said, is a big thing, and I I think that's important. That that could that could change the tide a little bit for me here because let's imagine this is a, an improv comedy act on stage. Right. I feel like it's kind of uh, against the rules, against the the unwritten and written improv comedy rules. If one person is giving a speech, if the other person just comes in and goes, ah, and I shoot a fireball at you. I feel oh, like that's a, a no-no in the comedy world. Now, that may not right. be the same thing as D&D, but I think they're related. Little rules, yeah. Because I would say, like, I would say half of a good D&D campaign, like 50%, is you have to be good at improv. In, at least in a the, way. the basic, the tenets, the yes and is a very important right. thing. And this yeah. is this is a no but, isn't it? It's true. <laughs> so it's it's absolutely a no but. Now, it's I think it's same thing with with comedy improv. Again, I've worked with Thomas Middleditch. Don't ask on what. <laughs> I on think what. Th- that uh, some some sex stuff. I've worked with I, Drew Carey, so that trumps you. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. You were on Prices, right? Yep. No, Drew Carey show. <laughs> it's the yes and rule is not to say that characters can never disagree. Right. Like it's not like you must always go along with what the person says because sometimes it's funny to say no, but right. you're supposed to say no in a way that adds to the scene or, or makes sense in the context of the scene somehow. And that's where, again, we come back to the specifics of this case where I think it's like, it's tricky for me to say, I think maybe we, I should talk more about the nitty gritty of the, of exactly what was going on here. As I said, it's a cult leader. The, the party has been tasked with trying to get him back to see if he'll like basically come back to the side of the non brainwashed cult. Right. And um, essentially the DM says that in the middle of this speech, they were about to say that they weren't going to come back. Mm -hmm. And that's when Dave interrupts them. And he's like, well, if you just let me, it's fine. If you want to prep your fireball, I'll let you do that. But I just want to finish my little spiel because it's going to tell you how he feels. And so you can know for the story. And the guy was like, no, 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 no. Fireball, fireball, fireball. Shut up, shut up, shut up. And he says, Dave says he is a drow and this guy is also a drow. It's a, mm-hmm. this is a race in D and D for those who don't know. And that he, this, that's how he justifies it as being in character is that he feels very strongly that like to him, this guy is an abomination that this is right. That he would be like, so enraged by him that he would cut him off. But you know, it all boils down to me. I'm thinking as you were talking, cause I wasn't listening, thinking about like, understandable. <laughs> If your DM is good, if your DM isn't even, you know, just okay, you would be able to be like, oh, you fireballed him. Well, this scroll fell out of his pocket and the scroll says, you know, continuing on the story. Mm. There are thousands of ways around that kind of thing. Or, you know, because you interrupted or because you did a fireball at whoever this character is, you are now arrested. Or, you know, there's there's something that, <laughs> because you don't want to make the worst thing in D&D is when there's nitpicking back and forth and the DM is against your group or certain group members are against. You have to make it fun because even in real life, there's going to be something that happens. Like if you're conversating with somebody, somebody's an asshole and you have to, you know, just roll off and, and, and do something with it. So in D&D, like, you know, like I said before, have a boulder crush the, the character who's who's being a fool or you know, have have the guy who's doing fireball against be able to be invincible and just block it. Just, you know, you have to this. This falls upon the DM full heartedly, I think, because you have to be stronger, I think, than your strongest player as a DM. Physically, if, <laughs> like you need to be able to fight them in a cage. Well, that's how you become the DM. You right. must be the strongest you are literally, I mean, it's in the name. You're the master And of if this a player dungeon. challenges you, you must accept their challenge. And if right. they defeat you in one-on-one combat, they become the new dungeon master. Right. 
which nobody ever does that because nobody ever wants to be the DM. That's a hard job. <laughs> I, I, I vibe with a lot of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I think you're right on in pretty much everything that you are saying right now. Here's another, here's a side aspect to this case that may or may not a sidebar. Affect a sidebar. You can that get that over at patreon.com slash geeks on trial. <laughs> we'll save it for that. We'll do it now, though, for you guys. Uh, it may or may not affect your ultimate decision, but according to the case file, Dave immediately leaves after the DM says, Hey, could you? I think I just want to finish this speech before you do that fireball. He says that Dave goes, Nope, and just leaves, and that. Uh, apparently they're playing a a game where it's very difficult and they can't, like they need the full party to play. So they can't even keep going without them. Hold on. He physically leaves or his character leaves? Physically leaves. The the human being vacates the Controlling the the character just goes, nah, I don't like that. I'm going home. He He literally takes his toys and goes home. (laughs) That's correct. (laughs) Uh, Which again, we don't always know if these case files are fully accurately depicting everything that's involved here, but that's what it says. It says that he just goes, nope, right. and he's out. Now, anytime somebody just ends up and, and does that and doesn't want to be, you know, talk about it, explore it more, you're automatically just the the the, the douchebag in my brain. Because, like, oh, it's not my way? Oh, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. Like, it's, that- it's, 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 it's like a jerk thing to do, and at that point – you're kind of not just ruining the game for everyone, but you're basically like not giving your DM any sort of respect. You know, you're, you're not, you, by doing that, you're basically saying, well, I know better than you hurry up. I got shit to do. Yeah. What's hard about this is that we don't know if this is a pattern of behavior. If, if this is not the first time the DM has done something like this and maybe it's like, okay, this is the final straw or it's the first time ever. And then they're overreacting. A little bit. Uh, Now, it's also hard, too, that, like, okay, so this game can't move on without Dave. That just kind of seems like also it might be a badly designed thing that you can't just... Well, according to to, um, Jim, it's like that's the whole... The idea of this campaign is that it's very difficult or something, so they need... But I do kind of agree with you. It's, It's not that hard to just tweak some numbers... Right. Usually, if a character gets which is up why, and like, I hate to be bad mouthing the DM at this, but it seems like they're just not. I don't want to say a lazy DM, but it's like they don't want to like. That's a adapt. positive term in the in the D and D world. Is it? Well, there's a <laughs> there's a book called The Lazy Dungeon Master, which oh, okay. is about about like improvising and not preparing too much for D and D. But you know, like, it seems like the, the DM could be guy like guiding the story more sure dave is a complete asshole for doing all of this you know d- d- does he have the right to do the fireball absolutely that's that's your care you have you are controlling your character be it for the best of the team be it for the worst of the team you have your own story that you're trying to go along with and you you want to have fun doing it if if blowing up shit is fun for dave then that's what dave wants to do but you have to control it via the DM. And that's where your yes and comes in because then you're, you know, sure, it might not be proper protocol, but you have to be able to adapt to that. Yeah, but, and also, I mean, you you know, you're saying the DM is the one who he's responsible for, he should react and adapt. But uh, on the flip side, the DM also has, is the arbiter of what goes and what doesn't go in a, in a D&D game. I, I'm I think this is a really tough case because yeah. every time I I think about one side I agree with it and then I think about that, the other side because I'm like a hundred percent a player has the right to do what they want I, I actually I do think their justification for it in character sounds somewhat reasonable based on the limited information that we have it doesn't sound like a huge stretch and and like shooting a fireball at a villain it's not another character. It's not a human being. It's, 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 uh, I mean, I guess it's the potentially they could not know he's a villain, but right. maybe they could reform him or something, but it sounds like that's reasonable. So I'm like on their side, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be able to right. do that. But then I'm also like, it does suck though. <laughs> because <laughs> if you you're the worked DM, hard to write the story. Yeah. And if you're, if you're, it, 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 a lot of this is very hard to judge, I think, because it depends on the, of the vibes in the room at the time. 
Like, I don't know what it was feeling like because was there was there tension? Right. What was because there is one way this scenario could go where it's just like, oh, I shoot my fireball and it's everyone's laughing. And there's another way where it's like, I please, I was everyone else was like, maybe everyone else was listening and was right. wanted to hear. That's another thing. We had, I don't know what the so he says. Some of the other party members agree on his side. Some of them are on the other person's side. But that's maybe even more important is to say, what did the rest of the party want? Because they're they're the players who are here for the experience too. Maybe they wanted to hear the speech. Right. So I I don't it's I, it I, is it's very hard. I don't know what I what because I'm leaning. Yes, like I said, the DM GM whatever is the be all end all at the end of the day. But it's not like you have ways around it. So like you know if you if he killed this person mid sentence and you weren't able to get to the end of it. Then that's like, you know, oh, we just don't learn this lore and you'll never know. And then, this you know, you as the DM can also be right. like, I'm going to be petty about this. And the rest of this case or the case, the rest of this adventure is going to be bland because, well, you didn't hear the rest of the story. So you're not going to know what to do next. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah, I do think that's a good way to handle it is to just, yeah, is to punish them in character right. as opposed to outside. It's like, OK, if that's what you want to do. Then this is what's going to happen. Right. Oh, you guys didn't know about the store that we walked by, so you can't get into it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're right. This sounds like it could potentially be a – for uh, this this person to get up and leave after this happens and, and he kind of got shit on, that shows that either this is the char- – this is that person that's always going to be doing this in D&D and this might be a serial thing that they're doing and they don't agree with or they think they should be the DM. So maybe it's time to – figure out a way to get rid of that character. You know, like, yes, sure. They were a villain. The, the person that they fireballed maybe have their, their lackeys come and attack them. You know, if there's a villain, there's always other people behind them. And especially in most D and D campaigns or, you know, oh, this bugbear came and just, you know, ate you. <laughs> he ate you. He ate you. Bugbear So there's, I, I understand where you're coming from as well, because it's like, I've never DM'd, so I've never, but I, I've I've written things, and it's like you want to get this out, but there's also nine other paths where you can still get that out. I think I have. I think I know. I've decided where I'm leaning on this one. I I, I could give my verdict. What's the DM's you... name? The DM's name is Jim. Okay. Uh you should go. No, I mean you should leave. It's time for you to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so here's I think I've laid out pretty pretty clearly this your the reasons I'm conflicted in this case. Uh it's uh there there's there's good people on both sides. Mm-hmm. It it makes sense. I can see both perspectives. Okay. Where I'm ultimately going to land comes from this. I think that Jim's Feelings are valid about not wanting to be interrupted for both personal and story reasons. And I think that what's his name? Dave potentially, um, uh, you know, potentially was stepping over a line and maybe should have just, should have just let it go. But I think that the real, the, the, the linchpin here, the thing that's going to make me change my mind and ultimately I think side against Dave, no, against Jim. <laughs> just call him, just call him the DM. Against the DM is simply that I think he, he needed to wait and pick a better time and place. I think the way to handle this was, as you said, let the fireball go through, adapt, change course, deal with it as it plays out. And then after the session, that's when you talk to Dave and say and, and, and talk to the group and say how you're feeling and how you and how you want future sessions to go. I don't think in the middle of the game is the time to do it unless this is a recurring incident and there's more history here than we're being clued into. But with the facts as the case as they've been laid out to me, I can only conclude that Jim is guilty. Who, who's Jim? The DM. Thank you. So I do, I, I have to fully agree with you because at the end of the day, 
the ruler of this game, the be all end all, the person who decides what's up, what's down, what color the sky is, what color, you know, everything is the DM. So you are correct. If, if they were like, Oh, he's, he's, he might be doing a fireball. Like he's, he's, he's got something going on. He's acting a little squirrely. Maybe I don't introduce this character into this world right now, you know, or I, I, I introduce it a different way. Maybe it's not a character that they can attack. Maybe it's a ghost that comes down. You know, there's other ways, which is also another way you could have done it. He fireballs it. And then a ghost comes down and goes, nah, uh, uh, and then, you know, you, I still, <laughs> so I do think that the DM is guilty because like they should have been controlling the group. Maybe not the person because in D&D we've all seen you can't control certain things. Overly controlling some things is bad as well. You need to you need to go as it is. It is an improv thing, so you have to go off script, but you have to know when and where to do that. So I definitely think the DM Jim the Jim M is guilty. Gavel please. Thank you. I'm still, I'm yeah, still thinking, because it's like it, it is hard. Yeah, it's like uh, I do think that Dave doing this, I can totally see it being annoying. But it, 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 in the in the case of this, if it's just this one time thing, it's like, yeah, you're there to take him or attack him. It's it happens. Now, like I I could see more the group complaining and being like, right. we wanted to hear this guy out. Why are you always rushing in and fighting everything? Right. Uh, but if the, you know, if that's the character and that's what it is, then yeah, I think that they're now, should they have gotten up and just abandoned ship that, that part, I don't agree with. Right. That's the, that's the bullshit thing where I'm like, okay, you're just being childish now because there was a a confrontation and you're done. And, but also if the group wanted to, to, to listen to it, they could, somebody probably had like a, a revive spell that could have brought this person back to keep talking or, you know, there's, there are, it's. It's literally Dungeons and Dragons. There's other things. I mean, he's not dead, do. right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, all right. So there you have it. That means we need to punish Jim the DM. We need to sentence him to some kind of a, a hearing. Maybe he has to maybe he has to take an actual fireball, like we burn him alive. Huh. That that would be okay. <laughs> I mean, we I'm could okay. start with something smaller if you want to He has to take a a shot of fireball. <laughs> Yeah, he has to he has to DM a game after having had an entire bottle of Fireball whiskey. Oh Jesus! He has to chug a bottle of Fireball whiskey. <laughs> that might be it. Might be safer for him just to get shot with a Fireball. <laughs> how much alcohol? How much is that? What's the what's a bottle of Fireball whiskey? At least two. I, I don't know. It's been it's been a while since I've had Fireball, but I know it's it's that cinnamon cinnamon whiskey. Fireball is thirty three percent. Alcohol for like a regular size bottle. Yeah, that'd be a lot. That would be, that'd be fun having a drunk DM and everyone else is sober. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's that. You have to get through a game, a three hour session, just being. You'd probably just pass out. Right. If I drank a bottle of, I think I'd be dead. I'd probably oh, yeah. throw up. I don't know if that's a lot. That would I don't... be seeing. Oh, I would love <laughs> to see you intoxicated doing a DM. Uh, but I feel like you would get like the stories would go off the wall. Or like you would start like attacking all of us in general. Like it'd be like, you're oh you you didn't want me to say this dead. It's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> maybe maybe that's the how I'm gonna DM from now on. Maybe that's the I I I we go back to D and D, but I only if I am drunk. This is exclusively the way I <laughs> play Dungeons. You're and Dragons. you're drunk and we're all high, so it's a See, good equal. Usually it's I don't know if it's better. I feel like the players usually can be drunk and the DM should be the sober one. <laughs> but, but then you're, you're control. We're a, we're a rowdy bunch to begin with. You can't. Yeah. It's, there's some things you that can't can happen control there. me, but it's yeah, something D- to explore. What is your, we're going off topic here right now, but what is your strongest, Topic's over. like um, your, your worst DM story? Like, was there something we did or other, d- other groups? <laughs> I'm I was like, like, I've only DM'd you. So it'll be about you. <laughs> well, you haven't DM'd other. <laughs> I thought you've played, or different, I guess it would be different. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've done a, I've done a few. I guess like, it would be our collective group in different times. Yeah, like for, for other RPGs. for Or our, any games you've played in that you've had issues with where it's like, oh, this could have gone better. Was there anything bad? Because I can't really think of anything major that wasn't just funny or just like you knew <laughs> it was going to happen. I mean, nothing like bad in the sense of, 
oh, this is a disaster and like and somebody friendships left. are ruined. Right. Yeah. You know, more just things like, oh, why did that person, why did you just do that stupid thing after I right. set up, you You went in that path when I obviously was leading you down this path or whatever. Like, But you're also good on your feet because then there have been times, like, I can kind of think of one where it's like, oh, and there's a wall here now that you can't get through. Like, you know, you have to be like... <laughs> Sometimes, I mean, I've done the opposite, like early on, I, I remember there was a, this one sticks with me because I feel like it was a, a teaching moment for myself where mm. I had some puzzle designed and a, and you guys were all trying to solve it and the player went through all these steps to solve it and, and I was just like, nope, that's not, that's <laughs> not it. And, and I look back on it and I'm like, I sh why didn't I just let him have that? Because right. he came up with a he came up with a way. I should have just said, yeah, it worked. Now was it because of, like you were like, no, I worked on this puzzle. I want you to get it. How I? No, I think it was. Uh, it, it was just. It was more like I wasn't confident enough to not stick to my plan. Okay. It was like I'm. This is what I came up with. So I don't. I'm too afraid to go off the beaten path. So. Well, I think being a DM, like, yeah, you need to come in with like a script. But then you also have to be like, okay, I can let some of this just go. Like, you know, yeah, you work hard at it, but you yeah. also have like, you know, but if you don't get to use it this time, I'm sure you can recycle and cannibalize some things for your next go round and, and you know, stuff like that. But I feel like, yeah. I, I, like I was saying, you know, it, it's, it's a big thing of improv. That's what it is. That's what a lot of it is. Puzzles are tricky too, because you can't. You can't just let them improvise whatever they want out of a puzzle. Like, right. <laughs> just sometimes you they do have to actually solve a puzzle. Right now, are, are there puzzles like like do you just make these up or like are there places online where you can like here, oh, yeah, insert there's... this puzzle? Okay. Oh yeah, even in the in some of the books. I mean, I mean, you know, you could just go through adventures and just steal whatever steal you puzzle. want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, what I usually did was just steal. Let's just take Zelda gate dungeons. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> just like just take that kind of puzzle is what I usually would do. Uh, there's a lot of fun D and D stuff we could talk about, and this episode was just one of them. But maybe the folks at home have D&D &D opinions. Maybe you've been a DM or a player, and maybe you have a different verdict for this case or a feeling on the fireball one way or another or how much fireball whiskey you can drink before you pass out. <laughs> Email us, geeksontrial at gmail.com. It's the same place you can go if you have your own dispute from a Dungeons & Dragons game or another role-playing game or a tabletop video game, any kind of nerdy subculture. If you've got an issue you need settled, send it to the geeks. That's us. We'll put you on trial. We'll give you a verdict. I like that. We should we to write that down. That should be we to copyright that. And if you want to help us uh, cover these copyright costs, because it's not cheap to copyright things, you can head on over to our Patreon. It's patreon.com slash geeks on trial. And for just five bucks a month, you gain early access to our audio video episodes. Plus, you get the episodes that we call Sidebar. The episodes, I guess, would be the show. The show that we call Sidebar. And it's where we talk about random stuff and a wheel decides uh, what we talk about. It's, it's yes. really cool. Usually we'll decide, but in that show, we'll decide. <laughs> I stepped on your pun for an even yeah. dumber pun. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. If you want to see more dumb puns, where uh, where can people find your dumb puns? All I do is dumb puns. You can find them over at JonathanEstes.com. I've got another podcast called The Yerky Boys where uh, we review Animorphs books. Uh, we're on a little break right now between uh, seasons, as we've called them, and we're talking about Animorphs fan fiction. There's a lot of sick shit out there if you're an animal. I'm sure there is. There's, there's a bunch writer. of weird fan fiction for everything. So go check that out. Uh, again, at my website or social media, whatever. You can follow me. How about you, buddy? Oh, you can find me everywhere on the internet under Ivan Han or Ivan R. Han. And right now, I just have a brand new episode that's going up as we're talking right now uh, over at the YouTube.com slash The Snack Guy. And it's me at the Chocolate Expo of New Jersey. I, I walk around the floor of the Chocolate Expo, try some chocolates, and I, wow. I got to see three of the re few remaining cast members of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory while I was at the convention. It was quite Did cool. you tell me about that? I feel like I we had a conversation about, about it, or I, I don't know. <laughs> but I saw, um, I forget what his name is, but one of the Oompa Loompas, um, Mike TV, and um, I want it now. Um, Veruca Salt. Veruca Salt. Yeah, I think you did tell me about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Did you at any point play the Land of Chocolate song from The Simpsons? No. Homer's. Check that out, the snack guy. And then that's going to do it for this episode of Geeks on Trial. Hey, <laughs> you know me, Jonathan Estes. 
And? Oh, I'm sorry. I was still... I was, you know him, and, too. And you know me, Ivan Hahn, and uh, this case is closed. See you next time.